for the passion of thy only begotten Son, is reveal his glory upon the holy mount. Grant unto us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross, and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the, tab the tables of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his servant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God, and he said to the elders, Tarry here for us until we come to you again. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a cause, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. And Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord.
Apostle Paul to the Philippians. Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, become like him in his death, that if possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. Moses and Elijah and Jesus on the top of the mountain. The first lesson this morning has an interesting little teaser in it. It describes Moses going up to the top of the mountain to receive the commandments from God. And it suggests that Joshua went up with him. But it doesn't quite say that. And by the time Moses gets to the top, it sounds like he's alone. But there's just that little hint. If you want to look back over it, just that little bit of a hint that Joshua went up there with him. Well, certainly Joshua was not in the camp. So the people and Joshua were not together. Moses at the top of the mountain 
receive from God the commandments of God on two tables of stone. And he brought those commandments of God down to the people. He actually had to do it twice. Because the first time he went up there and received the commandments from God and then came down, he found that in his absence, because he'd been gone for a week and then 40 days and 40 nights, uh, I guess the people had begun to wonder what had happened to Moses and had figured that he had absconded and wasn't ever coming back. Uh, so they persuaded Aaron the high priest to take all of the precious things that they had ripped off from the Egyptians, you know, all that gold and silver, and to melt it all down, and out of that to make for them an idol of a calf, a bull calf, a golden bull calf, which they can then worship as their God. And Aaron, who didn't take a poll to determine, but he responded to the will of the people, which he read as overwhelming, did what they asked. And they melted down all that jewelry and stuff and made them something to worship. Aaron proclaims, this was their God who had delivered them out of slavery in Egypt. And the people worshiped the God. In fact, they sacrificed to it. And we are told in a wonderful little phrase, they ate and drank and rose up to play. And that's what Moses discovered when he came down from the mountain with the tables of stone the first time. And in righteous indignation and in great fury, he slammed the tablets of stone down and shattered them. And then he had the idol that Aaron had built destroyed. Ground up fine as a powder thrown into the creek and then they all had to drink it. Think of that. Uh, well, then he ran rampant up and down through the people. And then after that, and I'm leaving out a whole lot of detail, Moses went back up on the mountain and then later came down again with God's commandments. But this time, in his absence, they behaved. Maybe it's because Joshua stayed with him the second time. I don't know. Something to ponder and another tangent to go off on. But God knew these people. And he knew that at heart, they were idolaters. And they didn't really give God credit for having delivered them out of Egypt, despite all that they had seen and undergone to get where they were. And God knew that they couldn't be counted on. And so he required of them that they should spend 40 years in the desert before he would let them enter the promised land. That's long enough for all those people to die off and some new ones who have learned to be born and to be raised up. That's Moses. Well, Elijah. About 500 years after the event at Mount Sinai with Moses and the tables of stone, King Solomon has died, and his son divided the kingdom. Part of the country has rebelled and seceded, making two kingdoms. In the northern kingdom, Israel, the prophet Elijah, after three years of drought, no rain whatsoever, because Queen Jezebel has been engaged in idolatry. And not only has Jezebel embraced idolatry, she has been working hard to force the nation to make idolatry their official religion and to stamp out the worship of the God who delivered them from slavery in Egypt. Well, the prophet Elijah challenges the priests of, of the idols, the priests of Baal. He challenges them to a showdown on the mountaintop, Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel overlooks the Mediterranean on one side and the Jezreel Valley down on the other. It's an incredible place to look out from the top of. 
And he challenges them to sacrifice to their God and then see if their God will act to accept it. Well, so they bring in two bulls. And one bull is given to the prophets of Baal. The other bull is kept for Elijah. Elijah says, well, there's a whole bunch of you. You guys go first. And so they sacrifice the bull. They stack it up on top of the altar, on top of the wood that's piled there. And the sacrifice. But Elijah says, don't light it. Pray to your God. And so they said, fine. And they begin to do that. They built the altar, they slaughtered their bull, and they put the sacrifice on top of the altar, and then they prayed, as they did, uh, that their God would accept it. And they limped around, and who knows what the sight must have been, but it must have been something. All of those, pro those priests of Baal uh, imploring Him for something. And throughout this whole episode, while the, the priests of Baal are calling on Baal to come and accept their sacrifice, Elijah is busy running up and down in front of them, shouting at them, jeering at them, poking fun at them, and shouting, where's Baal now? Why don't you shout a little louder? Pray just a little bit louder. Maybe he's a little deaf. Pray a little louder. What? Oh, you've got to be louder, guys. Maybe he's asleep. He's taking a nap. What? And then he even goes so far as to say, wait a minute, shout a little louder. Maybe he's going to the bathroom. Come back pretty quick. Shout louder. It's in there, I promise you. Hannah's laughing. Well, anyway, Elijah was extremely outrageous in his mockery of the god Baal. And if anything would have called down anger and fire, you'd have thought that would. Well, nothing happened. It finally became clear that the priests of Baal would get no response. So then Elijah restores an altar that was there that had been dedicated to God. And there he slaughters his bull. And he lays on top of the wood that he's got piled up there, that sacrifice. And then just to dramatize the whole thing, he soaks the sacrifice three times. He even had gone so far as to have a trench dug around the altar there on top of the mountain so that when they started pouring water on top of it, the water so thoroughly drenched the sacrifice that it also filled up the ditch around the altar. All right, and then, just to make sure that nothing accidental was gonna happen, and then, then he prayed. And he prayed. And he prayed that God would send down fire from heaven. And sure enough, God does. Now, I don't know what that looked like. Maybe it was a bolt of lightning. Maybe it was just spontaneous combustion. I don't know, but we're told that it fell from heaven. It lit up all the wood on, the, on, the, on top of the altar. It consumed the sacrifice and it dried up all the water in the trench. That's some heat. And then it began to rain. And in the midst of this, the people turned on the prophets of Baal and slew them. But Queen Jezebel swore that she would have vengeance on Elijah. Elijah, despite his tremendous victory, despite his vindication, goes into a funk. He's bummed out. He's depressed. Oh, he's sure that he's the last one left. And finally, in his depression, he sets out for the same mountain that Moses had gone up on, the mountain of God, known as Sinai or Horeb, depending on who you talk to. And before he can get going, an angel of God provides him with bread and water out in the wilderness so that in the strength of that food, Elijah can make the journey of 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God. And when he got to the top of Mount Sinai, God met him. And God told him what to do. And God told Elijah not to worry. He says, don't fret. 
You're not the only one left. God assures Elijah that he has yet 6,000 who had not bowed the knee to Baal, as he says. And so Elijah is hardened by this, and he returns, renewed, set out to carry out God's orders. But make no mistake about it. What Elijah had confronted in the prophets of Baal and Queen Jezebel and all of that was idolatry. What Moses confronted in those playful people was idolatry. On the mountain of transfiguration, which takes place about a week after Peter had confessed that Jesus was the Messiah and Jesus had told them that they were going to go to Jerusalem and that he had to be crucified. And what happened then? Peter, whom he had just called the rock, turns and rebukes him. And what does Jesus have to say to Peter? The same thing that he had had to say to Satan in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. Get thee behind me. Get thee hence, Satan. He said that to Peter. Now, six days later, a week, give or take, they're at the top of a mountain. Maybe it's Mount Hermon, maybe it's Mount Tabor. We're not told exactly. I think it's Hermon, we can argue over that. It's not important. But that's where they see Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah. James and John and Peter are there with him and they watch him. And while he's there at the top of the mountain, all of a sudden they see Moses and Elijah in that conversation with him. And Jesus' clothes begin to glow and his face shines. His face becomes brilliantly white. I left out earlier when Moses came down from the mountain, his face was lit up too. So much so that they, they made him put a veil on because they couldn't stand to look at him. Well, here we are again. And as one of the Gospels says about Jesus in this vision on, on the mountain, that he glowed whiter than any laundry could bleach him. Thorax <coughs> commercial. Uh, and when they see that, wow. Well, they say this to Jesus, Jesus, it's a great thing we're here. Let's build three booths. Peter is, you know, he says, we can do this, Lord. I'll make one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. It'll be great. We can just stay here. And forget about that trip to Jerusalem you were talking about. You know, with all that unpleasant stuff, let's stay here. And while they're trying to talk Jesus out of going back to Jerusalem, they're covered by a cloud. And a voice comes out of the cloud which says, This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. And they fall down on their faces in awe. And it's only after Jesus comes and touches them and says, Get up. Don't be afraid. And they look up and they see that He's the only one there with them. Moses and Elijah have gone. And so they head off for Jerusalem. Peter and James and John, all the disciples for that matter, have an idolatry problem. The thought of losing what they would have if and when Jesus became the victorious Messiah that they were sure He was, was too much to think about. I mean, the vision had confirmed it. But it was too much. They had pinned so much on that. They were sure of their place in the midst of that. They too wanted what the Hebrews at the foot of Mount Sinai, those playful people, had wanted too. They too wanted what the worshipers of Baal wanted. And they too want what you and I want. We want to be rich and famous and powerful. Well, that sounds a little grandiose. Put it this way. We want to be prosperous, popular, secure. Is that better? It's a little softer. 
and will do anything, anything to get it, or anything to keep it. And we will turn on God Himself if we think He is going to disappoint us. Because that's what they do to Jesus when they become convinced in Jerusalem that He is going to disappoint them. Now, you and I need to get our perspectives straight. You and I need to take a trip. You and I need to go to the mountain. And you and I need to go up to Jerusalem. And God knows that. And in His love and in His mercy, He has arranged a trip for us. It begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And we're going to travel 40 days and 40 nights up to Jerusalem. And we will enter into the holy city. And on Good Friday, we'll say what the crowd says. Let him be crucified. And we will have a glimpse of ourselves with all of our illusions stripped away. And we'll do to Jesus what the people in Jerusalem did to him. And he'll die. And he'll rise on the third day. And he'll proclaim his forgiveness to us. And even if we don't actually kill somebody, I hope we won't, that's where our heads and our hearts will go. And we need to go there. Because we need to confront the truth about ourselves. To embrace that truth. And in the context of our Lord's life, which even what we do to Him cannot destroy, uh, we need to know that about ourselves. Now I am so glad that Lent is here at last. Because I need it. And I'm pretty sure that you do too. Beloved, for all of that, thanks be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in the course of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has sown through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the Jesus of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, 
Let us pray to the Lord.
communion. Let us pray. O God, our times are in thy hand, and with favor we pray on this thine hand may be that it should be in another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen her trust in thy goodness all the days of her life, and bestow thy blessing upon her, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please have a seat. Again, good morning and welcome on this, um, as we used to say when I was a kid, you knew I was going to say it, right? Quinquagesima Sunday. It's just fun. I have, I have this mental image of the hymn board in St. John's Episcopal Church in Bisbee, Arizona of Quinquagesima on the it, like, it ran the whole width of the board. It was marvelous. I didn't have a clue what that meant. It means Lent is about to begin. Uh, if you have not brought back your palms yet, it's not too late. Bring them with you when you come on Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening is, is our pancake supper. Uh, I told you all about the name, the Brit Potter Memorial Pancake Supper last week. I won't do that again. It's this Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Please, if you would, let us know you're coming so we make sure we have enough batter made so there's sufficient pancakes and sausage for everybody. Uh, but come and get in on this. I hope you've already received your Lenten handbook. If you haven't, it should come in the mail because Monday is a President's Day. It'll be Tuesday. Uh, but you ought to be thinking about your Lenten rule. I hope you've, <clears throat> you've been praying about it. Uh, it's looming. It's all going to be there on Wednesday. Wednesday, there will be three different Masses celebrated. There's a big banner out front telling everybody in the neighborhood when we're doing that. Uh, take a look before you leave so you know for sure when you're coming. You can bring folks with you both to the Pancake Supper as well as to Ash Wednesday services. Uh, and let's make a good Lent uh, and get it off the ground in a good way. We've got a fine crop of, of speakers planning to come and be with us on the Fridays in Lent, uh, I said at 8 o'clock, it struck me somewhere along the line, something old, something new, something borrowed, and I don't know who's blue. Uh, we have both Bishop Iker and Bishop Reed will be, will be speaking. Uh, we also have two of the youngest priests in the diocese, or the, the, the newest priests in the diocese, uh, Father Travis Province, as well as Father Matthew Rogers, both curates at St. Lawrence in South Lake. They'll be with us on two Sundays. And then the other one we know very well, Father Ron Drummond, uh, will also be with us rounding it out. But the topic this year is, is following on from what we got today, from what Father did in his class before the one we just finished up. Uh, we are going to discuss the Ten Commandments. Uh, and all of that is profitable for us as we consider uh, where we are in relation to our own performance with God. Lends the time for us to train so that our performance is much better than it is today. Somebody said, no pain, no gain. Well, that's, that's, that's what Lent is for. Lent is going to the gym. I can, I can spin this stuff all day long. Oh, I'll stop there. You get the point. If you would, look over the rest of the bulletin carefully. Uh, ah, I'd be in trouble if I neglected to mention it. The ladies of the parish are invited to lunch on Saturday. Uh, and the, the, the details are in the bulletin and the baskets on the table in the narthex. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
Receive our Lord Jesus Christ, presented by thy people to the honor of thy holy name, and in the work of thy Catholic Church. All things come of thee, O Lord. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God, King of all creation, do thy goodness we have this bread to all, which art thus given in human hands of men. It will become for us the bread of Blessed be God. 
Blessed art thou, Lord God, King of all creation, to thy humans we have this wine to offer. Fruit of thy work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Lord, 
not that they are merits but part of our offenses. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. By the Son with whom I have been in the unity of the Holy Ghost, honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we our Father, who art in heaven, I will thy name, thy
Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be the Holy Ghost, the Almighty Lord, 
you are the Christian man of the Spirit. If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be among you and remain with you for the Amen. Amen. The man said, then, depart in peace. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came from a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them may be power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.